again they've summoned Hinchcliffe 29 minutes gone a Manchester City corner Brian Gale very useful in the air at set plays it's a very deep one and has it gone across the line from David White it has So the Hinchcliffe corner does the trick again, just as it did against Southampton here. Bishop! Oh, how unlucky. This is Lake. Ian Bishop, the bye from Bournemouth. Paul Lake hit the rebound wide. Lineker pulling left. Powers is behind him. And uh, well, perhaps not confident enough of taking over, but Fennec got it to Gascoigne and Tottenham a level. Ian Rush once again kept Aldridge on the bench for most of the game, despite a series of misses which must be worrying the Liverpool manager. And when Aldridge finally came on, he almost snatched a last-minute winner. Liverpool once again swarming all over the home side. This time the woodwork getting in the way. Dorigo. Good run. Now he's in foul by Harper. Yes, penalty to Chelsea. They went to right back is furious, but Alan Settle has no doubts. And it'll be Graham Roberts and 1-0. Dixon, he's through. Got support from Kevin Wilson. There is Wilson. Oh, and Harper's turned it into his own goal. What a tragedy for the fullback. Kevin Wilson in, saved by the feet of Turner and dumped away by Pearson. And they could have had three or four in the last five minutes. That's Dixon's header and that is 3-0. Three goals in five minutes. McAllister, down to Nicholas. That's a lovely ball. McAllister, and they're scoring for the afternoon. Isn't For what should have probably been an all-ticket match, an overflow of Manchester United fans caused a kick-off delay of around 25 minutes. Michael Knighton, United's new owner, appealed for calm. Ironically, it occurred on the day the Football League voiced its concern about the increasing trend of delayed kick-offs. The police had no alternative here, and the game eventually got underway just before half past three. Now, United's big following and big money signing suffered an early setback. Only 12 minutes gone, but approaching half-time everywhere else in the country. Gary Micklewhite, cause of my ball, your ball, or no calls at all, created mayhem, Paul Goddard following up after Dean Saunders had hit the bar. United had their moments, but defensively found Goddard much too hot to handle. The crunch came when Bruce and Phelan both lunged at the same time. Penalty kick, 11 minutes left. Now, Dean Saunders' style is reminiscent of Fanny Lee's. Whack it hard and straight. Works too. Arsenal have started slowly. Very few chances and very few instances to show you in the match against Wimbledon at Highbury. Brian Marwood at the centre of most good things for the Gunners. Good keeping from Segers. And Arsenal's best chance, well, supplied by a Wimbledon player. Marwood's cross coming in. And it's Phelan's header that goes close to his own goal. and looked even better this afternoon. Norman Whiteside's looking to be an integral part of Harvey's strategy. And a real snip of £650,000. Norman's first league goal for the club. 
Now, the man bought to pressurise or replace Tony Cott is the ex-Wigan, Luton and Leicester man, Mike Newell. He scored in his home debut on Tuesday and added number two today. The style was in the taking rather than the making. Into the second half, and by this time, Graham Sharp was off the field injured. The man responsible, Jimmy Case, was booked for the tackle. But Everton were cruising by now. First goal of the season coming up for Stuart McCall, whose finishing was the only consolation in that FA Cup final defeat by Liverpool. Good goal, that. Everton, 3-0 winners. Millwall against Forest at the Den. The only goal in the last ten minutes. A lot of men forward for Millwall. Herlock has one go at it. It's Jimmy Carter who finishes well. It's a good start for Millwall, but two draws and a defeat for Forrest. Steve Coppel said it all on day one. Palace will need time to adjust to the first division and they'll start off as one of the favourites for relegation. Some would say realistic words, others pessimistic. Well, Wright and Bright haven't really got going yet and until they do, Palace will always be susceptible to this sort of thing, especially against solid, underrated opponents such as Coventry. Suckling might have got it. It was Brian Kill Klein strike. 1-0 Coventry. Norwich against Queen's Park Rangers at Carrow Road. Defence is on top. And defenders stealing forward pretty well. Andy Linnigan with that good header. Queen's Park Rangers, though, reshaped by Trevor Francis. They had their moments too. Good effort from Sinton. A big fumble from Brian Gunn. Bowen gets him out of trouble. Even when Robert Fleck got the ball past David Seaman, one of those days, it just would not go in. Another close thing in front of the Rangers' goal. No goals then for Norwich or Rangers but they're both still unbeaten. Both these two are drawn their opening two games. Charlton have already shown enough to suggest they might not have to rely on their perennial escapology routine at the end of the season. Andy Jones, number nine, who was loaned out of Port Vale for a spell last season, putting them in front. Well, Villa went behind against Liverpool uh, on Wednesday. They showed spirit then and it surfaced again this afternoon. Derek Mountfield to Adrian Heath, the next Everton combination. Saved by the goalkeeper, but Ian Olney got the equaliser. Once again, both teams having to settle for a point. <laughs> 